And welcome everyone to the start of season two of the One Up XP Show podcast. And today I'm joined with someone special, pro athlete, but also a college athlete. And it's it's kind of crazy because he's on the same or in the same org as I am. I didn't know it. And he's actually, I'd call local because he's in Michigan and I didn't know it. But yeah, they uh, they let me know. But first, before we get to this special, unique human being, we got to run that intro. Here we go. Ah, yes, the one up XP show. I just love that thing so much. Uh, we bring in Zach Davis. Zach is he's stomping around in my backyard <laughs> down in Grand Rapids. I had no idea. Kid is a pro in Apex Legends with Lazarus, who I am also a part of. And I I even have their old gear when they were set to destroy Exxon by accident. Sorry, Charlie, don't kill me. Um, but I I we had Chris on, who is the coach for uh, Grand Valley State. And uh, he's like, dude, you know we have a pro on our team? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, he's part of Lazarus. I was like, what are you talking about? So then I texted Charlie. I was like, hey, do you know this kid that's a pro for our Apex team that goes to school in Grand Valley? He's like, no. Who is it? I was like, Z Davis? He's like, yeah. He's in your backyard. I was like, dude, I had no idea. So we bring in Zach Davis. Um, he goes by Z Davis. He's a pro in Apex, but also at the same time a collegiate esport athlete in uh Apex, well, esports in general, but Apex for Grand Valley State University. And we'll get into that a little bit more because there is a big thing right now with professional athletes in the collegiate scene. Um, but first of all, welcome, brother. Thank you for giving me the time of day and talking to you. Um, I know you're a busy human being, and we'll get to that in a little <laughs> bit as well. Uh, but thank you, man. I appreciate it. How's everything going? Uh, it's going good so far. Thank you. Good, good, good. Glad to hear it. Um, they're, they're getting pounded with snow down there right now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, first of all, I have to ask for everyone that's and there's Bowser. Bowser just came in. Um, but I have to ask for everyone who is uh, probably listening and uh, maybe tuning in for the first time. First of all, Apex is a great game. I enjoy Apex. Um, as We'll get your story, too, that you've enjoyed Apex. But let's start at the beginning. Zach Davis, little kid, enjoying some video games until now, pro athlete. Give us the timeline. How did gaming start for you, and how did you wind up with Lazarus, Apex, and Grand Valley? Uh, so... You know, it's it just started playing other games, you know, console games, Super Mario 64, you know, into Xbox, Call of Duty, played a lot of Destiny. And then around 2014, I got my first computer. I started playing CSGO with my brother, H1Z1, when that was all popular. Oh, yeah. H1 uh, was yep. so good. H1 was, I still love H1. It was so I good. still love I, H1. I, yeah. That's what got me into computer. Uh, yeah. Actually, it was my first computer game uh, that I really committed to was H1Z1. And that's actually what yeah. got me into the Battle Royale scene. Yeah, that's where, I, that's where I first started was H1Z1. And then, you know, I played a little bit of PUBG, played, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of Fortnite. Yep. Uh, and then Apex just kind of dropped out of the blue. And my buddy, who I still play video games with, who I started playing H1 with, was like, dude, you got to just play this everybody's streaming it there was no announcement <laughs> of this video game ever right everyone just started streaming it it looks like a blast I was like all right whatever let's run it i was like even reluctant to like play I was like dude it's just gonna die let's just stay on h1 let's just let me just play fortnite or whatever yep and i was like all right we'll give it a try and we just played it for months on end and it was a blast and then ranked came out you know we we worked you know as much as possible we got fred the first season yeah um and then, you know, just got, I just kept getting pred, you know, every other season, my buddies left. And that's when I started to be like, all right, well, it's time to, I want to just try and get into competitive. And I was going to play with my two buddies, you know, that I've played H1 with since the start. I'm like, nah, dude, I'm done with the game. So I was like, all right, it's time to make some connections. <laughs> uh, so I just started looking around for people, started playing like low tier scrims, you know, small leagues and stuff like that. And then, you know, ALGS came up January of 20. 2020 i think or 2019 right whenever that was first started and i was doing decent uh you know it wasn't anything special i didn't qualify for arlington the first major or whatever which you know hasn't come about yet just because of covid and stuff right um but then all the online tournaments came on i was placing you know very well semifinals finals in a couple of them and then i played well in finals in a couple of them got my name out there and then uh just kind of worked my way through the circuits bouncing around teams uh, and then pro league quals hit i played the first pro league quals 
um, with two different people. And then I got dropped after that, even though we made finals. And then <laughs> that's when I started playing with Dank and Viz, who are on Lazarus. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just fried the rest of Pro League quals. We made it in. We didn't even need to play the last qualifier to like even make it in. I finished like top seven in like overall points for uh, for Pro League quals. Uh, so we we scooted on in real easily, and then uh, just started playing Pro League, and now we're now we're in playoffs. So on the my question is: it just come natural to you, or is it just something that you find easy? Yeah, I mean, I've been playing for a while, so some of the stuff came natural. There was some stuff going from low tier pro to where I'm at now that I was just like, I need to start working on some stuff. Right. So I started working on you know playing different characters. I'm playing you know Gibby now. Uh, I got I got into Kovex and Aim Labs because I was like I gotta do yeah. something here. Like, I, I, I hit my... that hard when we started get, taking Fortnite serious. So like every time yeah. you start the game, you warm up with Kovex. Yep. So yeah, compared to other pros, like my aim is not you know crazy. Like there's a bunch of mechanical just freaks out there. Oh yeah. You know I, I'm not one of those, but you know my knowledge and then that combined with you know just an average professional aim, you know, has gotten me to where I'm at today. Right. Um. So I'm just actively trying to get better at the stuff I need to. Right. Um, but I've been really good at just being smart at a video game and, and more than not. And that gets me. All right, well, that's, it's a big thing. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. you, you mentioned it, that knowledge, that smartness, you're also taking that to grand Valley. Um, yep. and you said you're pursuing an engineer degree, correct? Engineering degree. Yeah. So you're taking the smartness and also your, your athletic ability because you're also an apex pro, but you're going to Grand Valley for an engineering degree and also playing apex for Grand Valley's esports team. Yep. And what, yep. what, what spawned an engineering degree out of nowhere? You know, back in high school, I was in the robotics club. I saw a lot with that. And yeah. then Grand Valley worked very closely with, you know, the robotics scene. There was a bunch of, you know, tournaments and stuff there that I would go to with my school. And then, it was just kind of a quick little segue, just point A to point B. There wasn't really a second option or anything. Right. So just kind of ran with it. So you're going to do four years at Grand Valley for that engineering degree, or uh, is that what it's you're looking gonna at? Be, it's going to be five, yeah. Five. So I'll be done next winter, I believe, next winter or next summer. Got you. Uh, so, okay, now my question is this. Do you find it tough to balance? And let's not, let's not forget to mention, you also have a full-time, or you have a job as well on top yeah. of it. Um, so you have a job, you have, yep. you know, your life, you have yep. pro, you have esports, yep. you have college, you have five major things going on. Do you find any like issues balancing yeah. that? Yeah, it's tough to balance. You know, I, I did a bunch of stuff over, over the last semester, just kind of figuring out what I need to do better, where, right. where it's easier to balance if I need to drop, you know, either like work or figure out something different with school or whatever, you know? And so I'm going to figure that out as I, keep progressing through college what i need to do to balance a little bit better right but yeah it's definitely it's definitely a juggling act for sure <laughs> oh, i i that for sure i mean that was the biggest thing when i was a pro was like time time is a killer yeah um you know and time management's huge if you can find a way to manage it and still do what you want to do and be good at what you want to do i mean hats off brother i mean that's that's yeah. pretty uh pretty amazing so uh you are on lazarus you're going to grand valley you're getting your engineering degree on top of it, you're doing your thing, man. I mean, that's hats off to you. But I have to, what are the achievements for Z? I have to ask, like, what have you done so far, you know, in Apex or school that you are, you know, absolutely stoked about and that you put on your mantle? Uh, I think the couple bigger things um, was I got the Series E jersey in the back. That was a little thing before I was in Lazarus. Yeah. E Sports Arena, who's partnered with Walmart, runs a league on Apex. I qualified for that, which means I got sponsored by them. That's uh, Which really started kind of like a cash flow, right. you know, I'm able to put something huge on my resume. I qualified for this. I started making money off this. Right. I can help, you know, it's kind of a good way to get myself out there. I qualified for champs. Uh, that wasn't really like something crazy though. Cause I got in through ALGS points just by playing all the other tournaments. Right. Um, and then uh, pro league, you know, top 20 in pro league is probably my best achievement right now. Uh, Cause sweet. it gets me into playoffs yeah. and then hopefully I can do something in playoffs that'll, that'll be able to, uh, to rep for a while. And and when do those uh, playoffs take, uh, take place? Playoffs are on the 23rd of January. Yep. And so that's a uh, Sunday. Yeah. If any, anybody is interested in, uh, you can go retro back and uh, check his out. We're right, right now. We're looking at his Twitch channel of him playing uh, some here with his last stream, uh, playing with Dank and Vizzy. 
Um, and then, uh, I mean, obviously we'll know by then what's happened and we'll give a little leeway into, uh, leading into this podcast. But if you guys want to check out all that, I'm sure anybody who's interested in apex is probably catching these as they're happening. Um, but what are the goals for Zach and Z Davis? What, what are your goals overall, um, whether it's school or whether it's pro league, whatever it is. I'd like to just find a consistent job somewhere, whether it's in the engineering field or in esports. Right. Um, if I can keep doing this, this is probably, you know, the thing I want to do the most is just keep playing or find somewhere in the field of esports, something I can keep doing. Right. I mean, cause the um, passion's there, obviously the yeah. passion is you have a passion for, you know, not only robots, but engineering, you have a big yep. passion for video games. And obviously yep. you have so many, uh, you know, little roads right now with all these passions that you have. So, I mean, I think you'll be fine finding something down yeah. the road with your passions. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, the main goal, obviously, you know, going to school, getting your engineering degree is, you know, and being in esports is find that passion and continue yep. to run with it, whether, you know, it's now or somewhere down the road. And actually, it's funny because you bring that up because we talked to Riley Long at Aquinas and he also did the same thing. He hung up his controller um, in early uh, 2010, 2011 because he was a pro or he was competing in call of duty but he wanted his engineering degree went to michigan tech so he's like i'll hang this up and then yeah. you know four years down the road he's like wait i'm gonna pick the esports thing back up and then now he's the coach at aquinas and also runs yeah. armada so it's just like wow that's kind of uh you know run the he got his engineering degree he's like i'm gonna go back to esports so it's yeah. always there the doors are always open yeah. plus not to mention you know you're you're playing these orgs and these people know your name so it's those doors will always be open for you down the road exactly Yep. Um, so let's jump into some of these questions. And first of all, since we kind of beat around the bush here a little bit, um, I mean, is this a long term option? Do, do you want to stay in esports if it's an option? Obviously, we know you kind of have that passion, but if the option presents itself to stay in esports, what do you think you'd want to do uh, other than yeah. be a pro, obviously? Yeah, I think <clears throat> I'd like to stay around in esports as much as possible. You know, I think I could provide a lot of things, whether it be on the business side of things. Right. Or if, you know, coaching, whatever, playing, I'll still play. I don't, I'll play as long as I can. Right. You know, um, but you know, I'll just do whatever I'd like to stay in the esports field as long as possible. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, obviously the passion's there. And like you said, there's many different options. You know, you got social media, you got the marketing, you got the coaching, obviously you being a player coaching seems to probably be a really good fit. Um, yep. but yeah, that, I mean, once you're a pro that kind of, I feel like everyone kind of wants to be in that field a little bit longer, you know? When we had Purdy on the show, who's a pro in PUBG, he was like, yeah, I kind of want to be around this field, whether it's coaching or something in esports. You always kind of have that yep. passion to be there, you know? Um, so, uh, all right, let's get into uh, the well, kind of one of the main questions. One of the big things with collegiate scene right now, um, and I said we'd hit on it at the beginning of the show, is should pros be able to play in the collegiate scene? Um, with your pro status and also being on a college team, uh, what is your take on it? Do you see something wrong with it? Do you see something good with it? You know, from where I'm sitting, I don't see an issue with it because I, you know, you're on both sides of it. Yeah, I'm on both sides. <laughs> um, but I understand where people would be coming from, right? You know, you don't see, you know, anyone coming back from the NBA to play college, right? You don't see anyone from the NFL coming back to play college, you know, for another year or whatever. I mean, Jared Smith's playing golf, but <laughs> that's that's a whole different thing. Right. Um, but I can understand, you know, people trying to enter the scene via a collegiate route. Um, not wanting to get hosed by just pros who are also doing college. Right. Um, so I see that part, you know, I don't think it should really matter because you're going to see pros wherever you go in any tournament. It's not like they're separated by any means. Right. And I mean, esports is very unique in the fact that, you know, pros are young kids. Yeah. Because it is new. I mean, you see pros exactly. like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. A lot of pros careers are over at 20, 21, 22. Exactly. Um, so, you know, I understand the pros are trying to prolong the professional career for those kids. But at the same time, if you want to get your engineering degree, you know, I can't be the one to say, no, you can't come here and get your engineering degree. Hey, while you're here, play something that is not, you know, overseen by the NCAA. Like that's, yeah. that's not our choice. And to be yeah. honest with you, if those kids are in college right now playing esports, majority of them are probably going to be close to pro status anyway. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, pros are getting played for, or uh, collegiate kids are getting paid for the likeness of now anyway. Exactly. So there, yeah. I don't think that there's a huge difference in it. Yeah. But I, I definitely see the marketing value in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, kind of the big reason this is an issue is if you have a world champion that says, yeah, I'm going to go college and play esports now, like, 
is that a, a marketing scheme or are you actually going to go play Call of Duty, you know? Exactly. And these schools, it's the, it's the LeBron effect, if you will. These schools yeah. have these kids coming in because they have a world champ playing on their esports team or in their yeah. esports department. So I kind of see that aspect to it, but I can't. I can't. Being an advocate for collegiate esports, I cannot say do not allow this kid to come play esports because he has a pro status attached to it. Exactly. Especially just because it's so new. You know, if it was a large influx of people being like, hey, I'm going to college to play esports, like it's such a new thing right now that right. honestly it should just be take anyone you can get and then maybe down the road, maybe you're just like, hey, you know, you're too good. Just stick to professional. Do, do your stuff over there. Right. And know? that's the thing is like if you are, you can always go back to college to get your degree. Yeah. Um, But, you know, if you are at your peak, why are you in college? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like you should probably play your peak out, then maybe play some esports after the fact. But I, yep. I definitely hear both sides of it. Uh, what yeah. do you, what do you, uh, what do you, um, or what is, I should say, or what is the biggest challenge for you uh, right now being pro slash collegiate athlete? What do you see as the biggest problem or biggest challenge? Just time. Time's yeah. the worst thing. Like, it is, it's dude. always going to be time. It's always you time. Know? Uh, between homework, doing homework, doing, you know, preparing for tests, preparing for, you know, anything on esports tournaments, scrims, whatever. Most of the time yeah. I'm, I'm in bed by 2 a.m. and then I'm waking <laughs> up at 6 a.m. No, I know? hear that dog. I, so, I mean, when I was, when I was rolling, um, you know, morning shift from two to 10 at work and then coming home, I'd take a nap for two hours yep. and then we had scrims until 10 o'clock at night. And then I go back to bed for two hours. I was like, dude, I'm, sl I'm splitting sleep and getting four hours, dude. I, the yep. pro life is not easy. Then mix uh -uh. in some collegiate. There it is, dude. He's got the yawns <laughs> going on. He knows. And he uh, he graciously took out some time for uh, for us today to talk, and I appreciate it. But uh, is there anything else that you see as a challenge for you that is uh, maybe not time-related? Uh, I mean, in terms of, you know, Apex, yeah. you know, probably more as you get in professional, finding teams is really hard. Oh, yeah. Know, especially, especially if you don't have, like, the resume, mm -hmm. you know, or anything. You don't have anything to, you know, back yourself up on. Right. You're just going to be sitting there looking, you know, for hours, days, weeks. Yeah, and you know, I've, even, seen, I've seen some of your tweets where it's like, yo, we're looking yeah. for this one or we're looking one here. Like, we'll take this guy. Yeah. Like, and, and that is something that is tough, especially in Apex, because yeah. the Apex scene probably isn't as deep as, say, like, Fortnite. Fortnite, you can grab somebody easy, you know? Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, Apex... I, I feel like it's always evolving with Apex. Um, yeah. Whereas, uh, like you mentioned, it is tough to kind of keep, you know, three together that you're always going to run with or even just looking yeah. for one. Yeah, I mean, even when, you know, I, I, I snagged Dank and Viz, you know, the day of, like, roster lock or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah, and before that, you know, finding a pro league team was even hard. I had to wait for people to kind of make other moves and then, you know, Pro League week one, I, I sneaked in with a team, made finals. So I was like, all right, well, now that I got points, I should be able to find teams a lot easier. Right. You know, because a lot of people, you know, skill is fine, but if you don't have, you know, any points either, it's like people aren't even just going to want you, even if you're the best player, because you'd have to go out and just win the week. Right. To even make Pro League, you need, you need consistent points. You need consistency. Right. So just getting into finals week one was fine. And then, you know, from then on, it was just easy to keep points and do stuff. And to be honest with you, with the uh, ever evolving Apex, you know it, it, and then you got people's games changing with stuff, uh, you know, so yep. that's even tougher because you know it, it's very much with battle royales anymore. You see these games update like every week, every two weeks, every three weeks. Yeah. The a uh, new season is completely different after ninety days. You know, uh, who are they adding to the game that might be broken? Um, exactly. So it's yeah, I I t I definitely understand that, and that's one thing that I think is uh, like you mentioned, very challenging in all of it. Um. But I have to ask this now, kind of side question, is with uh, kind of the pro, the college level, can, is there a challenge with playing at the collegiate level and then turning around playing at the pro level? Like, is there anything that you, like, as far as a team or solo, or is there something different so, completely between the yeah. two? Um, right now, I don't, I haven't found, like, a huge collegiate scene for Apex. I, there was right. uh, some series going on that I played in a little bit, and the competition is very drastic, right? Mm -hmm. You know, any teammates I got to play with because of college are going to be, you know, night and day difference between who I got now and who I got there. Right. You know, on the pro league and, you know, in college. Um, so working with a team is a little different because I know a lot of things that probably they don't know. And I'd have to basically coach them on the fly in right. game, but also, you know, the level of, you know, the quality of scrims or the quality of the tournaments per se right. per player is a lot easier and a lot more manageable. Mm -hmm. So even then it's like, 
you know, it's kind of just equal out. I'm just sitting at the top of the stack. I just got to keep my team going and then see improvement. I mean, not even that you got to evolve to a different style too. So, I mean, yeah. you got to realize who you're playing with and you know, exactly. yeah. what those strengths and whatnot are. And then you have to worry yeah. about where's the circle and how, <laughs> what's rotation going to do. Yeah. And then you have to realize who's with me for rotation. So, I mean, yeah. it kind of uh, just lends yourself to, again, how your brain works. It feels like you work really well with that brain just moving fast. You know, yeah, for a lot of people, yeah. that's anxiety driven. Um, but for you, it just seems like that's normal life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I IGL for the team. So I'm the in game leader. So I'll, right. I'll make 90% of the rotation calls, you know, majority of the play calls, you know, um, you know, Dank and Viz will, will, uh, will calm some things, but like, hey, we should fight this, do whatever. Yeah. Um, for the most part, they're just fragging out. Yeah, for the most part, they're just shooting their guns. I'll just, you know, rack everything through my brain, right. pick a spot, hunker down, do whatever, and then, you know, go from there. Uh, how do your parents feel about this situation with you being a pro, uh, college, collegiate athlete? Uh, what, do, what, where, where they stand on it, and how, how has it changed? I guess I should. You know, ask. they're fine with it for the most part. I think they like it a little more now that I'm, you know, making kind money of more stable it. money on right. it. Yeah. Um, but beforehand, you know, it was kind of tough for me to convince them like hey i'm playing a tournament like every other weekend right i gotta play a couple you know a couple hours during the week you know and they and they just said as long as you're putting forth effort and everything you know they're not really going to worry about it but once they see things start slipping things will start changing right um so i mean did do you get scholarship money from uh grand valley no they don't i don't think they, they have, have anything yet i yeah. know they're talking about getting like scholarship money for or like right. scholarships and stuff for esports but yeah i haven't seen anything on it yet got you i mean i feel like parents yeah when you when you have something to legit back it up like then yep. they say okay you know I, I get that but i mean that's the whole reason why i'm kind of doing this is to show like people like you or you know a lot of kids that you know parents might say well you're wasting your time playing this game well i mean it's it's not a waste of time one we have a passion for it but two you can take that passion and get some free schooling. Like, you know, like you are getting an engineering degree. A lot of schools offer scholarships for esports. And I know Grand Valley's, I knew they were talking about it. I didn't know if they were yet or not, um, but they're on their yep. way. I mean, a lot of programs yep. now, I think there's 300 schools in the country that give, you know, not just for playing the game, but just for everything that is esports related. Uh, they're giving yep. those scholarships. So, I, well, how do your friends and like family? feel like it do you have you are your friends like my, dude you're a pro yeah my <laughs> friends dude my friends love it they go they they'll watch tourneys and stuff we'll text all the time about it good you know good. i got I love yeah that. so they they love it they think it's cool and stuff so it, that's i mean that was the big thing when i was a pro was like a lot of friends were like wait <laughs> you're getting paid yeah. to play a video game like yeah, yeah dude what do you mean wait i'm like yeah. of course i'm gonna do this and then a lot of my family like i've actually grown closer with some of the cousins that i didn't know uh, mm -hmm. A whole lot over the years because they play games too. So it's just like, dude, yeah. just play games. It's like, all right. So it's it's like kind of a, it's almost a family reunion that we you know we did exactly, set up yeah. on purpose. It's like it yep. works. Um, so is, in your eyes, what are some current pros and cons of the current scene? Whether it's Apex, whether it's esports, whether it's collegiate esports, what are some of the pros and cons that you're uh, seeing on a daily basis? I think you know with Apex right now, it's tough to get in, but once you're in. You're it's in. really easy to kind of keep, yeah, keep yeah. your name around. You know, a lot of the pros know me. A lot of people who aren't pros who are aspiring to get into the scene know me. So once you're in, you can kind of juggle around long enough to stay in. Right. Um, but the hardest part is always, you know, getting into the scene, you know, doing enough in scrims, doing enough in tournaments as, you know, basically a nobody to get in there to have people recognize you. And, you know, there's a bunch of people that I'm, I'm slowly kind of watching get into the scene. I've helped some people kind of, figure out their way into scrims, figure out their way into, you know, tournaments and stuff like that, helping anyone that I can. I mean, that was the biggest um, thing for us too. I mean, the yeah. big, the biggest thing about the pro scene is once you're in, you're in. And we got, yep. I mean, we were in discord um, scrim, scrims because there was no competitive scene yet for Fortnite yep. when we were in it. And then when we finally went to the first Fortnite event, we got back and we had everybody's contacts. Like we were contacting, you know, these people that had the professional discords for scrims. And yep. these people that we never, you know, had insight with before, but since we were with them, they're like, yeah, this is where you need to be. And that was the easy part. And once we got there, you know, that was fine, but it was hard getting to that part. That wasn't the easy yeah, thing. Exactly. You know? Yeah. That's, that's the hardest part is just figuring out a way in. Cause especially with a BR, you know, it's, it's easier than most because, you know, if you're doing anything like Halo, Valorant, COD, it's easy just for one team to play against another team, right? right? One, you know, five on five call it right. a day. 
with Apex, you got to find 20 good teams to have a quality scrim. Correct. Which means sometimes if you only have 15 or 16, you know, pro teams where usually we don't want to run a 16 man lobby right. or 16 team lobby. So we'll find four of, you know, the best up and coming teams, the four best challenger teams or, you know, anyone yep. who basically isn't going to ruin the quality of scrims for us um, to kind of play. And that gets, that shines some light on them. Yep. you know, a little bit more if they can pop off and people like, you know, they're going crazy. 100%. Uh, so. And that's what, you know, and I was going to ask if there was some tips that you have for kids that might be looking to do this. And that is one huge tip is, you know, always play like, you know, you never know who's watching one, exactly, and two, yeah. but always play like it's your last game. Um, yep. And I've lived by that forever is because, you know, you don't know who's watching and two, you don't know where a clip might end up and be like, who's that kid? Um, yeah. So just keep grinding. And if, you know, like he said, you know, there might be a scrim and they need a team. They need someone in the lobby. And that's where, you know, you, they get they scoop you up. You're in because, uh, yep. yeah, you're you're a decent team. Um, yep. What about the collegiate side of things? Is there anything that you see uh, pros and cons for the collegiate side? I think it's just it's just hard to get stuff up and running. Right. Because especially with Apex, new game, new collegiate scene. Right. It's a little hard to get, you know, everything going. Double whammy um, double new. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest pro is just having that segue for, you know, someone who doesn't know how to get into the pro scene. Right. To figure out, because if you can say, hey, you know, I play collegiate for this team, yeah. then as, then you have a team at least and you can now go and work as, you know, a collegiate team to try and get into the pro scene. Yeah, because so I, I mean, a lot of those people are, are also keeping an eye on the collegiate scene. Like exactly. a lot of people might understand it's not as simple as traditional sports where you go to college, yep. then you go pro and like, yep. that's how you do it. But I mean, video games, everybody's watching everybody uh, yep. for the most part. So even if you're in the collegiate scene, obviously people are going to be watching those scenes too, because it is just as important. Um, <laughs> yep. But when, uh, what are your ultimate goals over the next five years? I know we've talked about some goals, but obviously you're going to school, you're getting your degree, you're pro in uh, esports, you're playing college esports. Uh, you also have a life. I mean, yeah. is, what, there's got to be a time where you want to settle down, but what are the five years of ultimate goals for Zach here? Well, the first thing I need to do is graduate college. Yeah. You know, once <laughs> once I'm out of there, then I can kind of open up and see, you know, yeah. whether I want to kind of hunker down at a, you know, an office job and do that for a little bit, or if I can take a gap year in between, you know, if I'm not getting hired right out of college, right. you know, take a quick little break and see what I can do there. Um, but I think, you know, I just, I want to do good in playoffs, you know, that's recent. And then I, I think Apex is going to stick around for a while. So hopefully yeah. I can just continue to place well over the next several years. Yeah. I think uh, yeah. Apex has kind of, you know, got a foothold. Um, it's yeah. just, they've always had poor timing when it comes to their events. There's always something that seems like it puts yeah. them on the back burner just when they're going to yeah. be put on a national stage. Exactly. Um, which sucks, but I think it'll get, yeah. it'll get its due at some point. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I was kind of in the same boat as your friends when it came out after, you know, 90 days. I was like, this is a stale game. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. And then it changed. I mean, the seasons, the last several seasons have been great. I enjoy arenas. Arenas to me is so much fun, man. Like you give me the, like uh, in the game Destiny where you have trials where it's 3v3. Yep. I was like, dude, give me 3v3 all day in arenas. I yep. was like, that's so much fun. Um, yep. Did you ever think as a kid, uh, this is what I want to do or think this is where you would be as an option? Uh you know, not really. You know, I was never really good at, you know, good, good at video games right. until now. You're just playing you know, to I play. Played, yeah, I, I was pretty good at Fortnite. I didn't get into the competitive scene at all. Right. But, you know, there were tracker things everywhere. You know, one of the trackers that I was top 500 for one of the seasons and squads just because I'd play all the time. Yep. So I knew I was good enough to, you know, pub stomp at least. Yep. Um, But, you know, I didn't think I'd be good enough to kind of be playing against, you know, TSM energy, any of these top teams like that. I I know. had no like yeah, I had when we did it, we just went to Charlie and we're like, Charlie, would you care if you carried us as a pro team on the council side of things? He's like, Yeah, do it. Yeah. And so like we went into scrims and we ended up going to an event. And I was like, How the hell did I end up here? Like yeah. <laughs> I just joined an org as a content creator. Now I'm a pro yep. in Fortnite. I was like, what happened? Like, I, I have no idea what just happened. Um, yep. but as soon as they introduced turbo building, I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm a ground yeah. warrior, dude. I can't build, brother. This is not yeah. happening. Uh, but is there anything else that you think, like, especially for kids, I, I definitely wanted to get this out here because there's probably some kids that are sitting here like, yeah, you know, I play Apex. I want to do this. 
is there, are there any tips or tricks for kids that you might have um, in Apex right now or any video games in general that might want to do what you're doing? How do, how do kids go about doing it? I think the easiest thing to do is just reach out to a bunch of people. Yeah. You know, I got to, you know, my buddies who I play H1, they, they came back to Apex. They're like, you know, I might want to try and do something to get into the competitive scene. I'm like, you got to make friends. Yeah. Like, cause if, if your friend group falls apart, something's not good there and you want to keep doing this. Sometimes you just got to be like, Hey, either we got to do something or we got to split up and then you need, you need somebody else. Right. Yeah, yeah. I've bounced around so many teams that I got, you know, connections everywhere. You just need to know where you can turn to. Cause vouchers are always good you know people say right. you know he is like good yep you know pick him up so especially from high high tier players you know it's always good to have somebody be able to like kind of have your back yeah i mean so. i mean one of the biggest things that i found at fortnite was play random duos play random trios like you never know who you're gonna get paired with and i was mm -hmm. actually paired with one of my teammates right off the hop when fortnite yeah. came out i was like dude we're gonna ride and die this like we're gonna go and we ended yep. up going which i was like what the hell um, yeah. but random duos, random trios, um, you know, I know as much fun it is to pub stomp solo. Don't always do that because yeah. pub stomping solo is something very different than, you know, being with a team or someone who might have connections to that opens yeah. doors for you. Uh, so don't be afraid to, uh, play those random duos and trios and don't burn any bridges, kids. Yep. <laughs> you never know who's yeah. on the other side exactly. of that microphone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, that concludes our question portion of this. Um, but we, you're not off the hot seat yet, brother. We have yeah. one more fun game for you. Um, we do this with every podcast guest we've had. We ask them 10 random questions, just whatever's off the top of your head comes to you, uh, is kind of the answer. And, uh, some of these are out of left field. Some of them are just kind of normal <laughs> questions. So, uh, um, rapid questions. They're not really rapid. I say rapid, but everyone always <laughs> has to explain their answer. Uh, number one, what's your favorite platform and console? Uh, PC well, can be PC, an answer, yeah. yeah PC, yeah, PC is going to be the best one. Um, what's your favorite game of all time? Uh, Destiny or Borderlands Two are probably my some of my top two games. Wait, you're a Destiny kid? Yeah, I played Destiny from like the very start. Yeah, I didn't play I did Destiny too. Two. I, I didn't play Destiny Two at all anymore. Were you Were you big into Trials? Yeah, I was pretty. I was pretty good at Trials. You know, I wasn't crazy right. either, like a sweat how, or anything. How old were you when that came out? Because that came out what 2014? Yeah, it would have been like 14, 15, 16. See, that's where I started. Me and Lupo yeah. started around the same time in the Destiny community, streaming and everything like that. And, like, there was us. Um, you know, a lot of my friends started that way. Gathalian, Broman, like, all those streamers, like, the Destiny community mm -hmm. was monstrous. And the first yeah. Destiny, I will say, like you mentioned, was absolutely addicting. And there was something yeah. about that game that I couldn't put down. I'd put 12, 14-hour sessions in. We'd raid. Like, we'd do everything. Yeah. And then yeah, Destiny that, that 2 came so out, good. and I was like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah destiny one was unmatched yeah it was so good bungie hit that one on the head um yep. go to snack while you're in a session <sighs> nothing nothing that gets my fingers greasy you know, and oily yeah, yeah you don't want that yeah typically typically i don't you know munch on food or anything if, if it's something i'll eat it with like a fork or something right uh, usually just crackers maybe crackers uh favorite tv show or movie uh favorite tv show Favorite movie is probably anything Marvel. Dude, did you see um, the new Spider-Man? I did. Yeah, it, it was really good. so good. <laughs> it was so uh, good. Favorite TV show, I liked Breaking Bad a lot. I oh, watched like a lot of dude, TV. Dude, you Breaking are Bad's literally really a spitting image of me right now. One, you got the familiar haircut. Uh, <laughs> you're from Michigan, and yeah, Breaking yeah. Bad is my favorite show. That yeah, show Breaking is Bad's so really good. good. Brian Cranston, oh my God, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so good. Um, chocolate chip or oatmeal raisin? Chocolate chip. All right, we're not a spitting not, a, not a big not a big fan of raisins, <laughs> dude. All wheel raisin, bro. Uh, favorite pro traditional team, traditional sports team. Um, probably Detroit Tigers. That boy, I like the Tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yep. as long as you didn't say the Cubs or something like that, I would, just, <laughs> yeah, I would walk yeah, down yeah. there and slap you in the face. Uh, <laughs> cat or dog person? Dog. Yep, that boy. Uh, first car. Uh, I always like was, asking this question, especially to, you know, younger generation, yeah. because I just want to see what car they got. Yeah. Uh, it was my dad's old car. It was a 2005 Toyota Camry. Woo! That boy. That's, that's a good old reliable yeah. car. Right yeah, there. it is. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it, it spit out on us a couple of years ago. Did it finally? Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Uh, all right. This one's out of left field. Um, okay. Would you rather be attacked by one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? One horse-sized duck. Wow, he went right to it. There was no hesitation. Everybody I hesitates. I, could, I, think I, could, I think I could run away. I think there's too many, too many small horses. Oh boy, I like it. You see, 
the thinkers here. See, I, I will say between everybody I've asked that question between, it's always 50 50. There's someone's either got like Purdy uh, said he'd climb a tree and get away from the uh, 100 horse sized ducks yeah. or duck sized horses. Um, and then uh, Charlie said he would uh, horse whisper the uh, crap out of a duck. Well, they waddle. Like, shaped like they a can't horse. be that fast. I don't know, man. <laughs> Ducks, hey, a horse sized duck. Or something. I don't know. He can fly fast, though. So. <laughs> Probably. Um, all right. Last question, brother. Then you're off the hot seat. Anywhere hey. in the world, where are you going? Uh, probably somewhere in Europe or Japan. Probably like Spain. That's my number France. one answer from people is Japan. Yeah, or Japan. Yeah. Why, why Japan? What interests you over there? I don't know. I just like the culture. I love the food. Yeah. Food's amazing. Yeah. So that's probably the number one reason. But, you know, they're big in video game culture, too. All right. Um, so I think it'd just be cool to travel around and look so at it. culture, Japan, history for Europe? Probably something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty sick. I, I, I got to say, I went to Hawaii. Um, uh, and Yeah. Food's very similar to Japan, and it was absolutely delicious. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, give me something tropical. I love northern Michigan. I, I love the yeah. four seasons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I had to move somewhere, I'm going to Hawaii. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure. Uh, that does it for uh, Zach Davis, Z Davis. You guys can find him uh, on his socials there at the bottom. Twitch, uh, it's uh, or Twitter at it's Z Davis, and then Z Davis for his Twitch. Um, brother, I appreciate it. Keep killing it, man. Good luck in Thank playoffs, you. and uh, we'll catch back up with you and uh, possibly the uh, rest of the team. Uh, a little bit later. See how everything's going a little bit later this year, man. I appreciate it. Be good in school, too, all right, man? <laughs> Sounds good. I appreciate you.